Hello everybody, a uh, very very good evening and uh, welcome to Study IQ IAS English. I hope that all of you are doing great and uh, in this session we are going to cover the later Vedic age, the last part of that. In fact, in this uh, lecture we will be doing all the required details which are essential to understand about the changes which occurred in the later Vedic period due to several factors and the most important factor that will be the introduction of iron. Alright everybody, so let's get started without any further delay but let me tell you one important thing that if you are an aspirant of 2024 civil services examination, then study IQ has got a wonderful opportunity for all of you that we are launching the evening batch which is going to start from the 22nd of July and this batch will be having all the required uh, facilities. For example, uh, it will be giving you the complete GS preparation along with the current affairs, along with the coverage of the essential basic and standard books, all the things will be there. And not just that, after you are clearing prelims examination, you will be called here at the Study IQ campus in uh, Delhi NCR, where you will be provided the mains residential program without any extra cost. Right? So, that is a very great opportunity that you all have got. You can attend the batches in uh, English, English as well as in Hindi. So, you can use this code ASR live to avail these wonderful courses at Rs 29,999. So, do not delay it, be quick and let us get started to the topic. So, now let us understand the change. As we all are aware, as we all are aware that uh, history is nothing but History is nothing but uh, the factors of change, okay, the factors of change, okay, the factors of changes leading to, leading to the evolution, leading to the evolution in the interaction, in the interaction of, of the man and the nature the man and the nature and the surroundings I would say. Okay, so if there is an interaction between the human beings and the surroundings, that means it can include the other community, it can include the other human being, it can include the state or it can include the geographical structures or any type of uh, cultural or political formations. Along with the changes in the time, all these interactions of one person with the another person, with the group of another persons or with the land, place, people, society, anything, that is what we call as history. So, when you try to see one thing that this region this region was occupied by, right, occupied by the group of people, occupied by the group of people called as, uh, right, called as the Aryan people, okay, called as Aryan people or simply as Aryans, alright. So, they will definitely have some evolution in their way of living, they will definitely have some changes in the manner in which they were occupying this a particular area, alright. So, we will try to understand, try to see that the single factor of change that is uh, basically iron as a factor of change. If you remember the previous classes, we had discussed that the Rig Vedic people, they were the Bronze Age culture, they were the Bronze Age culture or Bronze Age people. And the later Vedic people, they were the Iron Age, right, they belonged to the Iron Age people. So, basically this development of using the iron from the culture that was using the bronze, what exactly were the changes which would be witnessed in the different interactions, in the different way of interactions like, like the changes in the polity, in the polity changes in the society, alright, changes in the economy, okay everybody. Not just that, if your society 
योर सोशल कस्टम्स बिहेवियर रिचुअल्स एवरीथिंग आर चेंजिंग एवरीथिंग आर चेंजिंग सो एवरीथिंग आर चेंजिंग सो हियर यू कैन सी दैट देयर विल बी द चेंज इन द रिलीजन एज वेल राइट रिलीजन एंड कल्चर ऑल्सो एंड इफ योर रिलीजन एंड कल्चर इज चेंजिंग योर इकोनॉमी सोसाइटी पॉलिटी एवरीथिंग इज चेंजिंग सो डेफिनेटली दैट वुड लीड टू द द चेंज इन द सिविलाइजेशन ओके द चेंजेस इन द चेंजेस इन द सिविलाइजेशन ऑल राइट सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी टूडे सो गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी आयशा अभिषेक प्रशांत सवे एंड सर्वेन्द्र बुलबुल एंड नुपुर good evening to all of you and guys you can share this uh, session with your friends as well all right and let us uh, try to see that after the changes occurred so as we are aware that iron was introduced what was the introduction iron was introduced if we talk about iron we get the evidences of iron from these areas particularly from the regions of from the regions of mehargarh okay mehargarh and also from the regions of the ataranji khera okay ataranji khera however these places right these places they were approximately they were approximately amongst the earliest places right amongst the earliest places where we get the evidences of the use of the iron however it would be the magadh it would be the magadh region from where we would be getting the best best resources of best resources of the iron okay so that means now we will start witnessing one thing we will start witnessing one thing that iron will be the prime factor to okay the prime factor to lead magadh to lead magadh to an imperial expansion to an imperial expansion all right everybody so we can say that probably magadh had iron probably mehargarh etc they had iron or probably the western up they had iron not in a very large quantity though smaller quantities and therefore probably they were amongst the earliest the earliest cultures where the emergence of uh, right, emergence of emergence of the civilizations started to take place however the largest deposits and the resources of iron the sources of iron particularly they were available in the magadh area and that is why in the long term in the long term observation the magadh will become the largest empire builder and that is where we see the importance of iron all right everybody now once you have discovered the iron once you have discovered the iron now try to understand one thing that the discovery of iron okay the discovery of iron discovery of iron that led to the led to the impact on right impact on agriculture all right everybody agriculture and it also led to the impact upon upon the state craft the state craft so now naturally the question comes into our minds that which type of impact were there impacts were there on agricultural practices and which type of impacts were there on the state craft okay everyone so now have attention agriculture okay agriculture so the use of the iron led to the led to the production surplus okay production surplus and why was there a production surplus in the agriculture obviously i don't need to tell all of you that uh, agriculture 
that will have the beneficial impact of the uses of iron because definitely the deeper tilling of the land, deeper plowing of the land that will be useful to provide better production of the uh, you know, food grains in the crop fields. And not just that, if there will be the uses of iron, probably the better protection of the crops would be possible, most probably by making the, making the uh, you can say, wires, etc. Okay. Similarly, there will be the easier, right, there will be the easier effort in cutting down the trees with the help of the iron eggs, with the help of the iron eggs. So definitely we will have the agricultural tools and we will have the weapons. Okay, so here the tools will be defining the agriculture and the weapons will be defining the statecraft. Okay, the weapons will be defining the statecraft. So the production surplus will occur in agriculture with the help of, with the help of agricultural tools, help of tools. Okay, leading to, right, leading to the emergence of, okay, emergence of the market system, okay, markets, all right, everybody. So, when the markets will be there, it is quite well understood that markets will be leading to what? They would be leading to the more upright, more incoming and outgoing of the people. Definitely, more and more number of the people will be, they will be coming and going from a place to place, which means the better exchange of, okay, the better exchange of of the people products people products and of will right of course the ideas will be there all right everyone and eventually when the people products and ideas will be there they will be getting exchanged definitely what will happen that will influence the that will influence the development of civilization development of civilization okay you can also understand it you can also understand it in a simpler manner like the production surplus that will lead to the economic prosperity economic prosperity will lead to the development of infrastructure and infrastructural development that will be called as the urbanization, right? So, here we can make another flow chart that here the production surplus will be leading to the economic prosperity, okay? Economic prosperity, economic prosperity that will be leading to, leading to the right, constructive development, okay, constructive development and constructive developments will be leading to the civilizational growth, okay, civilizational, which means the urban growth, all right everyone, so that is basically, right, that is basically what you have to keep in the mind. Now, one side we are seeing that, on the one side we are seeing that, this is basically the rise of the rise of the second phase of urbanization rise of the second phase of urbanization all right everyone did you get the point clearly did you understand this point very easily or not that due to the changes in the methods or techniques or the tools which were used in agricultural practices they led to the emergence of prosperity due to the production surplus, due to the marketing activities, due to the, the, due to the uh, reach and supply of the food products to the various places, right? And that also led to, that also led to the emergence of civilization and that is why ultimately this phase will be called as the, or this phase will become the reason behind the rise of second phase of urbanization second phase of urbanization. All right, everyone. Remember that when there was, when there was the emergence of the markets, different types of the markets was there, right? 
then those different types of the markets would be having the different groups and communities, different groups as well as categories who were indulged into doing different form of activities, right? Some of them were the merchants, some of them were the, you know, simple traders, purchasers and sellers. Some of them were, they were doing the accountancy work. Some of the others, they were doing the transportation work. Some other people were there who were collecting the taxes or collecting the share of the share of the profits. All right. So that means we can say that the economic prosperity or emergence of the markets that is directly related to the directly related to the development of the varieties varieties of the varieties of the professions okay varieties of the professions and works different types of the works and the professions they will be emerging and ultimately you will observe that these different professions these different works they will be leading towards what they will be leading towards towards the development of different communities based upon based upon their nature of work which will in turn which will you know later on converted into that will be converted into the caste system got it everyone so here let me tell you that the group of the merchants right the group of the merchants that will be having that will be having and uh, okay that we will be having and it will be at it will be simply called as the sangh or ganas okay ganas or the sanghas okay ganas or the sanghas all right everyone there is another name which is used to indicate this association this group of various trades right the traders of various trade that is also called as shrenik okay also called as shreni okay got it everyone shreni means shreni means uh, basically the category or the group which clearly tells that right, this picture or this flow chart clearly tells you that there was an extensive growth of the economic prosper right, prosperity extensive growth of the market and extensive growth of the civilizational developments these all these all things which meant that we were entering into the second phase of urbanization however however the second phase of urbanization was not untouched by any problems it's not it's not like that it was having no problems there were a lot of other contentious issues which this particular phase had to suffer because of the rising orthodoxy and because of the rising violence in the day to day life all right everybody now how did iron how did iron contribute into the changes which were faced by the statecraft okay everybody so kindly pay attention on this particular point if i am talking about uh, the impact faced upon the statecraft so remember that remember that this economic surplus this economic surplus it was based upon it was based upon uh, the agriculture okay the agriculture got it everyone it was based upon the agriculture and this agriculture agriculture was directly dependent upon directly dependent upon the land okay directly dependent upon the land okay and therefore what will happen what will happen the lands will become okay the lands they will become become the reason of reason of wars okay the reason of wars and why will it become the reasons of war right reason of wars because we all can understand one thing that today 
सपोज यू कैन बिकम अ ग्रेट यू कैन बिकम अ ग्रेट आर्टिस्ट इफ यू आर गेटिंग पॉपुलर बाय शोइंग योर आर्ट ऑन द सोशल मीडिया सो व्हाट विल यू डू यू विल ट्राई टू मेक अ पेज ऑन सोशल मीडिया एंड यू विल ट्राई टू शो योर आर्ट योर स्किल्स ऑन सोशल मीडिया सिमिलरली नॉट यू आर नॉट अलोन देर आर सो मेनी पीपल हु आर कॉम्पीटिंग विथ यू ऑन द सेम प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर द सेम फेम सेम ग्लोरी सेम मनी दैट यू आर ट्राइंग टू फाइट ओके यू आर ट्राइंग टू फाइट फॉर सिमिलरली द लैंड वॉज ऑल्सो राइट लैंड वॉज ऑल्सो द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर टू अटेन द प्रोस्पेरिटी टू टू अटेन द प्रोस्पेरिटी सो ऑल द किंग्स दे विल स्टार्ट फाइटिंग फॉर द लैंड ओके फॉर द लैंड सो हियर वॉट विल हैपन the lands will become the reason of war why will it become the reason of war because if you are having the sufficient land area sufficient land area then you will get the economic surplus and once you are getting the economic surplus what will happen you can have the you can have the share of share of janapadas okay यानी कि इफ वी से यानी कि इफ वी से दैट द मोर एंड मोर राइट मोर एंड मोर इकोनॉमिक प्रॉस्पेरिटी विल बी देयर देन देयर विल बी मोर एंड मोर शेयर दैट विल बी कलेक्टेड बाय द स्टेट और जनपद एंड दे विल बिकम प्रॉस्परस बाय टेकिंग द शेयर्स फ्रॉम द एग्रीकल्चरल प्रॉफिट्स विच द कॉमन पीपल वेयर अर्निंग विच द कॉमन पीपल वेयर अर्निंग ओके एवरीबडी so we can say one thing that this into right this introduction of iron had become the singular reason singular reason behind the growth of economy and growth of economy was directly related to the directly related to the increasing income of the ruling elite and that increasing income of the ruling elite was dependent upon the agricultural fertile land and therefore that agricultural fertile land became the reason behind the warfares increasing warfares all right now try to understand one thing that land had become the source of the source of money right and prosperity and prosperity so naturally what will happen naturally more and more right more and more taxes will be tried to collect right try to be collected so what will happen that will lead to the frequent wars okay frequent wars frequent wars means the need of the need of permanent army permanent army all right if the need of permanent army is there then definitely the state will the state will need more right more finances more finances okay if the more finances will be required then definitely what will happen the state will right the state will collect more taxes state will collect more taxes all right everyone more taxes will be collected and if more taxes are collected then the burden the burden on the farmers and traders that will that will increase okay that will increase got it everybody so burden on the farmers and the trader right on the traders that will increase got it so ultimately the farmers and traders are getting affected the farmers and traders are getting affected because of the frequent warfares frequent warfares now coming to the another side the frequent warfares okay the frequent warfares they led to what they led to the socio cultural changes okay socio cultural 
changes in which manner what what type of changes did they lead to definitely they caused the vulnerability of okay vulnerability of the women why because the women were comparatively weaker section right so they were physically weak they were physically weaker and therefore what happened their significance their significance in the society as well as economy that would start reducing that would start reducing okay everyone and that led to what that led to the decline in the position of women okay decline in the status of women in the status of women so we come across this fact as well that the position or the you know the situation of the women that was not very good in the not very good in the later vedic time period okay everybody clear everyone now i hope that it is uh, understood by everybody yes farmers were definitely more vulnerable see the farmers will be vulnerable the traders will be vulnerable the women will become vulnerable as well as the sections of society who were known as shudras even they will become vulnerable let me tell you why because if if there will be frequent warfares if there will be frequent warfares that means it will become essential to win okay essential to to win the wars okay victory will become essential if the victory will become essential then what will happen what will happen the priests okay the priests would be right they would be doing more number of sacrifices more number of sacrifices and rituals and rituals all right everyone they will be doing more number of the sacrifices and the rituals why because they will be telling the rulers that see boss you have got the army also you have got the land as well you have got the treasure also but still you are not winning this battle you are not able to win this battle why so because you are not doing the proper the proper yagya had that is required to win that particular area so different types of the right different types of the yagyas that will be introduced i will not say sacrifices right so different types of the yagya that will be introduced and different types of the yagya okay animal sacrifices will be there all right animal sacrifices will be there not just animal sacrifices and different types of the yagyas but also different types of the rituals okay rituals and customs will be introduced rituals and customs will be introduced in all the manner in all the manners the priests they would be trying to ensure that there are more and more such occasions more and more such occasions where where okay occasions where the dissipation of where the you know dissipation of of money takes place dissipation of money takes place which means simple as that if not money then the land or the cattle okay if not the money then the land or the cattle they were donated by the rulers by the you know kings to the brahmanical priests and why were they doing it obviously because the land and the wealth etc they were increasing enormously and if there were lesser number of the rituals and customs then 
probably the Brahmanical priests, they would have lost the opportunity to amass or to collect more and more wealth, right? So, this is why it was essential to conduct more number of the sacrifices, to do more number of the rituals, to provide more number of the customary worships, etc., complicated worships, costly worships, so that it involved the, it involved the uh, dissipation, right? It involves the, sorry, dissipation of the of the wealth from the wealthy categories to the to the priests okay everybody so that is how that is how the iron iron it affected the land and it made the land the point of the point of contention and that is that is the land which in turn takes the most significant position to affect society culture people, economy, everything. Even the Varna system also is related to that only. In fact, in the early Vedic, we would be seeing that the Varna system, etc. that was based upon the duty. In the later Vedic, that will be based upon the birth. Why? Why will it be based upon the birth? Because no single class of the Varna, no single group of the Varna, they would be willing to change their position, especially those who were on the top. Priests were getting the, you know, land, they were getting the money, they were getting the uh, grains and other wealth and uh, other types of the prosperity. So, they were not in uh, support of making any type of changes in the birth based, in the birth based Varna system. They wanted that now after them, their children should become, their children should become the successors in the profession of being a priest okay so therefore it became right instead of uh, a profession based categorization the varna system became a birth based categorization got it in fact to provide the validity to this categorization on the basis of the birth there was the right there was the composition in the rig vedas 10th mandal right in the purush sukta so, the composition was crafted and it was later on inserted into the Rig Veda. Right? Got it everyone? So, overall, overall we can say that this entire sequence of the changes which occurred during the later Vedic period, those entire sequence of changes led to the, led to the widespread impact on the people, society, culture, religion, everything which is present which was present during the early Vedic and why did it happen it happened because of the iron okay everyone I hope that it is clear to everybody now is it so now if it is clear to everybody now let us move to the let us move to the uh, detailings of one by one so I have given you a clear cut idea I have given you a clear idea now let us understand it one by one and First of all, we will see the changes that occurred in the political structure, the emergence of the monarchy. So, what will happen? That king will become, the king will become the real monarch, right? He will start having, he will start having the real authority, real authority will be there. So, that means, what is the meaning of monarchy? Monarchy means a, right, regular, a regular and uh, well, right, well, designed administration okay everybody regular and well designed administration a permanent army will be there permanent army will be there apart from that the most importantly okay the most importantly the position of the ruler the position of the ruler that is the king that will become hereditary okay that will become hereditary and unchallenged that is absolute okay absolute or undisputed we can say okay position of the ruler will become absolute okay so now the ruler now the ruler does not have the need to consult with anybody does not have the need to consult with anybody when the ruler is having right ruler is having absolute rule so that means he will 
not he will not be consulting right not be consulting with any organization or any body with yeah not bound with not bound with consultation of with uh, of anybody of any assembly okay so which were the assemblies in the rigvedic period if you remember the name of the assemblies which were sabha samiti okay vidath and gan all right so sabha and samiti so vidath and gan they completely got disappeared they completely got disappeared right and sabha and samiti they became they became ceremonial in the nature ceremonial in the nature that means the real control became right the real control or real authority that was exercised under the king under the king all right everyone so that means what that means what that there were there were the powerful monarchs who had the permanent army who had the regular and well designed administration and who were who were having the hereditary right hereditary transfer of the power and that system under which there were no significant powers given to their advising assemblies which were the sabha and samiti because the rigvedic assemblies known as the vidath the elderly group the gan the group of the artisans they had been disposed completely and sabha it was now only the group of only the group of the very near and dear ones the closest members in the family and samiti it was consult it, it was consisting only of the only of the selected few people so basically both the houses were consisting of the you know the near and dear ones of the king whereas in the rigvedic period sabha was a body which consisted of the uh, you know the kins the kith and kins of the uh, ruler or the rajan and samiti was the assembly of the general assembly of all the people of the tribe all the people of the jan who were adults obviously men and women both were allowed in samiti but in the later vedic period the women were not allowed in in the sabha okay they were not allowed in sabha got it everyone so most of the northern india most of the northern plains you can see most of the northern plains they had become they had become the larger political units larger political units from the janapadas from the janapadas okay that is the area of right area of a jan jan means tribe okay that became the mahajanapada right that became the mahajanapada okay so that is the that is the greater area of greater area of a tribe okay everyone however there were a few exceptions as well there were a few exceptions as well for example if we talk about uh, the mahajanpad of uh, vaishali the mahajanpad of vaishali then we can say right, then we can say that this vaishali which was uh, having the mahajanpad named as vridji okay named as vridji or vajji okay it consisted of the several it consisted of the several republics okay the group of republics and therefore it was probably one of the most important mahajanpadas which was located in the in the northern bihar in the tarai region of nepal that was the common place at common area similarly there were the presence there were the various republics present in the punjab region right in the punjab region so we can say one thing we can say one thing that if if this is basically the himalayan region okay this is basically the himalayan region 
so here you can say that in the foothills of the himalayas in the foothills of the himalayas in the western foothills as well as the eastern foothills we had the presence of we had the presence of the republic states in the later vedic period okay everybody in the later vedic period got it now if you understood the political structure then try to understand that there were also the developments of the armies the taxation system the state craft one important officer okay one important officer known as the vrajpati known as the vrajpati he became important why he why, why did he become important because the vrajpati became the in charge of right in charge of the revenue collection areas okay revenue collection area so the places or the areas from where the revenue was collected the in charge of that area was called as the vrajpati the vrajpati okay other people as usual there were the rajan right there were the rajan then uh, vishpati right vrajpati similarly the people were there however the position of rajan had become hereditary as well as some of the rajans some of the simple rajans now they were no more rajan they had become the various pompous kings who used to take the titles who used to take the titles which type of titles were taken so have a look on that this is the map of direction okay the direction guideline north okay then east then west and then south and central and center so if you are if you are the monarch the largest king in the northern area then you will be called as virat you will be called as virat what will be called as you will be called it as you will be called as virat okay then <clears throat> if you will be having right if you will be having the monarchy in the eastern part then you will be called as you will be called as samrat okay then there will be in the western part that will be called as the swarat in southern part you will be called as the bhoj got it then in the center the you will be called as simply raja right or simply the maharaj right now so these are actually the various uh, titles you can say that the simple monarchs the simple rulers they will start taking the titles just to show that they are superior than rest of the rulers who were ruling in that time period okay everyone so i hope that you got the clear idea now similarly the nature of economy will also change completely as you can see the domestication of the animals was the primary occupation during the vedic culture agriculture was secondary here the agriculture will become primary and domestication will become secondary in the early vedic the cattle that is cow bull etc were the important source of wealth in the later vedic the land will become the source of wealth so the fight which used to occur due to the cow stealing etc this fight will now occur due to the occupation of land due to the demand of land then the trade and commerce it was not the profession of many people yes obviously but here in the later vedic the trade and commerce became the most important practice and the beginning of coins the beginning of the formation of trading groups etc even they also started forming the groups right so the coins we know about the coins which were the punch marked coins okay punch marked coins and if we talk about the you know if we talk about the better transportation facility so the use of the use of the you know forked right use of the forked wheels or spoked wheels okay spoke wheels so that started during this time period all right what is the forked wheel or spoked wheel simply the wheel like that the wheel like that 
okay this type of wheel in the early vedic the other occupations included the weaving carpentry pottery craft here similar there, there were new occupations which were emerged particularly in the field of the trade and commerce and various types of the services they had become the parts of the trade and commerce right for example the accountancy services the writing services right all these things got it everyone so these has right these had uh, been these had been introduced as as the new changes now you can see here that the later vedic economy was quite ritualistic the large sections of the economy large people in the economic sector they were actually connected with the process of the yagya and sacrifices in fact if we are talking about the yagya and sacrifices let me tell you that there were some important yagyas such as the ashwamedh ashwamedh such as the vajpe such as the rajasuy okay rajasuy so these important sacrifices these important yagyas they were quite essential in fact they were essential not just because uh, they were important they were essential because these provided ample opportunities for the priests to mobilize the economic activities right it included thousands and thousands of the priests participants and the huge amount of huge amount of the food grains taxation was there huge amount of the economic mobilities were basically used right so that is why it became very very important factor to led to the to led to the changes in the economic structure the merchants etc they had to give away the large quantities of the food grains therefore they were not very much happy similarly the shudras they had to provide the large right large hours of their services and they that also without any payment so they were not happy with this type of practices sometimes the kshatriyas who were actually most of the time doing the yagya they were demanded the entire kingdom they were demanded the entire kingdom or something very uh, you know unusual like 1 lakh cows like uh, 10000 cows such huge type huge type of demands were made in fact these sacrifices had become the easiest you know easiest methods to accumulate the wealth by asking more and more donations and this is what led to the dissatisfaction of a large section of the society against the prevalent rituals and customs during the later vedic period during the later vedic period if we talk about the meaning of these yagyas these were very simple ashwamedh the horse sacrifice where a horse was simply released to roam about in the nearby kingdoms and if somebody catch that horse or somebody caught that horse that led to the battle between the owner of the horse the king who was owner of the horse and the other king who had caught that horse if nobody caught that horse that means horse had simply you know gone to different kingdoms roamed there and returned back that means that kingdom had accepted the accepted the suzerainty of the king who had left that horse how easy there is a horse leaving from india going to pakistan going to you know other neighboring countries and that horse is returning back automatically we will declare that okay fine pakistan has become the part of india right now once again due to due to the ashwamedha sacrifice okay similarly what was the rajasuy it is like the swearing in ceremony suppose there was the coronation ceremony of a king that he was uh, he was taking the title of samrat so he will do a rajasuya yagya and he will be sending the invitations to the different kings and whosoever will attend that invitation that means that king who has attended it has accepted that yes that one is the supreme king for example remember our prime minister he had sent the invitation to the different you know leader of the governments of our neighboring countries and almost all of them had attended the swearing in ceremony in 2014 
right so that was uh, you know symbolic that was symbolic to the rajasuya yagya where the leader is uh, taking the you know swearing in leader is swearing in taking the oath and all other nearby kingdoms they have uh, made their attendance got it something like that and what is the meaning of the vajpay vajpay means it was a sacrifice that was done by the old king it included the chariot race and it was intentionally the old king who was made victorious right so these three different sacrifices were there there were other sacrifices as well like agni storm was there there were various other sacrifices which ultimately led to the led to the suction of the wealth and prosperity without contributing to the production and that wealth and prosperity was not getting distributed properly it was getting accumulated and this is why the producing the manufacturing groups the producing segment of the society the vaishya and the shudra they were not happy with this type of practices and eventually they will support those religions which religions will be they will be rejecting the ideas of the sacrifices and the yagya and such type of you know such type of complicated ritual activities okay everyone so i hope that you understood the funda here that why were the lower segments in the society or in the varna system why were they not supporting these type of activities okay now if we talk about the religion religion had also become complicated as we discussed here and why did it become complicated because now the old requirements the old necessities they were no more required right now the agriculture had become the major occupation therefore the rainfall it was welcomed it was not detested it was welcomed and this is why indra had become indra had become the less important god now now nobody used to worship indra because the rainfall was now definitely occurring more frequently in the more frequently in the uh, you know ganga yamuna plains where the later vedic aryans used to reside so they did not need to pray to lord indra to cause the rainfall or to provide greenery to provide the cattle and everything it was automatically growing so they started worshiping the new set of gods they started worshiping the new set of gods and the new set of gods included the three important deities that is prajapati all right then vishnu and then right rudra all right prajapati he became brahma when the puranas will become dominant vishnu he will be associated with the identities like hari right shri hari narayan all right all these identities will become common with vishnu during the puranic period okay and rudra he will be having the same identity as that of the shiv right or shankar during the puranic period so if we talk about prajapati prajapati will be identified with brahma as we all know however prajapati was not not mentioned uh, in detail during the rigvedic time period but in the later vedic time period he appears to be the most mentioned and most frequently discussed god and sabha and samiti both were called as the twins right twin daughters of prajapati not just that prajapati was considered to be the creator god vishnu was considered to be the nurturer god and the rudra was considered to be the destroyer god okay everyone so as we all are aware we all are aware that these changes were there because the nature of economy society people everything had changed therefore it was essential that the nature of religion that has to be that has to be different all right everybody now so as you can see that nature of religion was different 
सो डेफिनेटली देर विल बी द लॉर्ड्स एंड लॉर्ड्स ऑफ द रिचुअल्स एंड कस्टम्स विच विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड लाइक द सिक्सटीन संस्काराज विल बी देयर ओके सिक्सटीन संस्काराज विल बी देयर लाइक देयर विल बी द फोर डिफरेंट आश्रमाज ओके फोर डिफरेंट आश्रमाज विल बी देयर ऑल राइट सिमिलरली पुरुषार्थाज विल बी देयर ओके फोर डिफरेंट पुरुषार्थाज विल बी देयर इफ यू रिमेंबर द आश्रमास सो ब्रह्मचर्य गृहस्थ वान प्रस्थ संन्यास इफ यू रिमेंबर द पुरुषार्थाज राइट धर्म अर्थ काम एंड मोक्ष राइट देन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द विवाह राइट विवाह बेसिकली दैट मीन्स मैरिजेस ओके सो एट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द मैरिजेस विल बी देयर ऑल राइट एट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द मैरिजेस विल बी देयर फोर ऑफ देम विल बी सोशली सेलिब्रेटेड पर्टिकुलरली ब्रह्म विवाह देव विवाह प्रजापत विवाह आर्ष विवाह दीज विल बी सेलिब्रेटेड सोशली अदर अदर फोर दे विल नॉट बी सेलिब्रेटेड सोशली बट दे वे आर ऑल्सो द प्रेवलेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द मैरिजेस विच इंक्लूडेड द गंधर्व विवाह असुर विवाह राक्षस विवाह एंड पैशाच विवाह ऑल राइट सो एट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द मैरिजेस वुड बी देयर so overall you can see that so many things were existing so many things were there which led to the over complications over uh, you can say over uh, rigidization of this entire religious practice leading to the complicated social structure as well you can see here the brahmans the priests scholars and teachers kshatriyas rulers warriors administrators vaishya agriculturist merchants traders and shudra the laborers and the service providers however there will be the emergence of such people as well who will be who would be considered as the outcast people considered as the outcast people right so how will the how will people become outcast so on the two basis on the basis of the profession on the basis of the profession okay profession and on the basis of on the basis of the intervarna marriages intervarna marriages okay if you remember the intervarna marriages basically there are two types of intervarna marriages known as the anulom right anulom and pratilom if we talk about anulom so here the husband is of the higher varna higher varna and wife is of the lower varna okay and if we talk about pratilom vivah here the wife is of right wife is of higher varna and uh, the husband is of the lower varna so these people were not considered the part of any of these four different varnas and that is why that is why there will be the emergence of the fifth category as well eventually during the subsequent time period that fifth category will become the category of untouchables and and those people who were the children and the successors of those children who were born out of the varna sankar born out of the varna sankar okay these people were called as the varna sankar so the varna sankars they will become slowly they will become the part of the part of the vaishya community vaishya community okay everybody so eventually they will become the part of the four fold varna system however those people who were categorized on the fifth varna on the basis of the profession they will never be they will never be the part of the varna system they will always be considered beyond the varnas the varnas fourfold okay everyone so here if we talk about the literature so there were lots and lots of changes which occurred in the literature particularly and here you can see shruti literature and smriti literature that is what we know about we all are aware about it in shruti literature we talked about the rigveda samveda yajurveda atharva veda all right and in the smriti literature particularly we need to understand it 
देर वे आर द धर्म शास्त्रास पुराणास इतिहासास राइट दर्शन एंड उपवेदास वेदांगास एंड आगमास डिफरेंट राइट डिफरेंट ग्रुप ऑफ द लेटर वैदिक लिटरेचर रेंजिंग फ्रॉम द लेटर वैदिक पीरियड एंड अप टू द गुप्ता एज दैट ऑल इज रिगार्डेड एज द पार्ट ऑफ द स्मृति लिटरेचर स्मृति लिटरेचर ओके सो हियर द लॉ बुक्स द लॉ बुक्स देर वॉज अ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन इन द यूपीएससी प्रिलिम्स ओके यूपीएससी प्रिलिम्स द लॉ बुक्स विच वेर बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज अ स्मृति मनुस्मृति याज्ञवल की स्मृति पराशर स्मृति नारायण स्मृति all these were the law books and they were also known as the dharma shastras then there were the puranas puranas included right the 18 18 major puranas 18 major puranas okay itihasa itihasa also called as the epics epics itihasa include the ramayan and mahabharat ramayan and महाभारत ऑल राइट एंड देन दर्शन गाइज दीज वेर दिक्स एंशियंट फिलोसफीज सिक्स एंशियंट फिलोसफीज विच वेर डिराइव फ्रॉम डिराइव फ्रॉम द वेदिक लिटरेचर एंड दीज इंक्लूडेड दीज इंक्लूडेड द सांख्य योग न्याय वैशेषिक पूर्व मीमांसा एंड वेदांत और उत्तर मीमांसा वेदांत और उत्तर मीमांसा ऑल राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट देर वेयर द वेदांगाज वट आर द वेदांगाज वेदांगाज आर दोज हेल्पफुल हेल्पफुल स्किल्स और हेल्पफुल सेट ऑफ द नॉलेज दैट अवे दैट मेक्स अ पर्सन कैपेबल ऑफ डूइंग द करेक्ट रिसाइटेशन एंड द करेक्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग राइट ऑफ द वेदाज सो दे बेसिकली आर कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ दे आर कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ द सिक्स डिफरेंट स्किल्स which is shiksha that is a uh, right shiksha then kalp vyakaran chhand nirukt and jyotish and jyotish all right that is about that is about the vedangas if we talk about the shiksha right shiksha so shiksha basically deals with the phonetics now kalp the matrices how is the composition made vyakaran the grammatical structure of the shlokas mantras and hymns etc okay then chhand okay kalp basically means right the kalp means uh, sorry what was i said shiksha kalp okay shiksha that means the phonetics kalp means the rituals sorry kalp means the rituals vyakaran means the grammatical structure chhand means the matrices or the compositional structures okay nirukt that is etymology the origin of a particular word that is nirukt and jyotish that is not astrology astronomy which means that at which particular position of the planets and the stars you should be you should be uh, you know reciting those uh, hymns of the vedic culture so that it can give you the optimum result it can give you the optimum impact got it so these are the six vedangas vedangas means the limb of the vedas then there were the upavedas which were also composed during the later vedic period so rigveda had the upaveda called ayurved yajurved had the yajurved had the dhanurved and after that samaved had the gandharvved and atharvved it had the shilpaved and arthaved two different upavedas were there got it everybody then uh, agamas are there agamas are basically the you can say the three canonations basically related to the three distinct distinct categories of the upcoming puranic hinduism and agamas are categorized into the shaivite agamas vaishnavite agamas and shakti agamas okay so these three distinct groups will be evolving later on during the puranic period they all have their origin during the vedic culture only okay everyone so i hope that now you are very much clear about the vedic literature and especially the shruti literature is taught to you but smriti literature now it is clear to you if those who are not aware about the shruti literature even they should be aware about this rigveda samaveda yajurveda atharvaveda 
दिस हैव द डिफरेंट रिसेंशन ओरिजिनल टेक्स्ट इज कॉल्ड संहिता डिस्क्रिप्शन इज कॉल्ड एज ब्राह्मण एंड कमेंट्रीज आर नोन एज द आरण्यक एंड द क्वेश्चन आंसर कंपाइलेशन बेस्ड अपॉन द फिलोसफी दैट इज कॉल्ड एज द उपनिषद ओके सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ऋग्वेदा एंड द ब्राह्मण द ब्राह्मण ऑफ ऋग्वेदा एथ्रेय कौशित की एंड सिमिलरली सामवेदा द ब्राह्मण ऑफ सामवेदा वॉज पंचविश एंड जैमिनी यजुर्वेदा द ब्राह्मण ऑफ यजुर्वेदा हिज तैत्री एंड एंड सतपथ आफ्टर दैट द अथर्व वेदा इज देयर द ब्राह्मण ऑफ अथर्व वेदा इज गोपथ गोपथ ऑल राइट एवरी वन सो देर आर देर आर सो मेनी डिटेल थिंग्स विच आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी रिमेंबर्ड फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर हाउ एवर आई होप दैट यू ऑल मस्ट हैव गॉट अ कंप्रिहेंसिव अंडरस्टैंडिंग इफ यू हैव नॉट गॉट दैट गाइंडली डू वॉच इट यू कैन ऑल्सो वॉच इट on uh, you know increasing the play speed because nowadays most people have lesser time lecture is a little bit longer so you can watch it on the increased play speed and you can share this video with your friends also if they want a comprehensive conceptual and clear cut learning about the later vedic period okay everyone so if right if you are uh, an aspirant who is preparing and if you are uh, willing to join study iq for your preparations though we are offering you a great opportunity now that we are starting our new evening batches from 20 22nd of july okay 22nd of july and 6 pm will be the timing the 6 pm to 9 pm okay that will be the timing so you can join these batches in english english and uh, hindi any of these three medium and this batches will like these batches will be having the comprehensive coverage of the preliminary courses as well as the mains residential program will be there and also the interview guidance will be there along with the provision of the current affairs books mock test everything whatever you need to crack the examination just one thing that we cannot do that is your share of hard work you have to do your share of hard work rest everything that you have to leave upon us and for that you can join us only in rupees 29999 just do one thing that use this code asr live okay this code asr live asr live that will become 29999 got it everybody thank you so much for watching it take care bye bye and in case if you want to join the telegram group you can simply search this channel in telegram that is uh, at the rate of abhishek singh sir po so that will be uh, my group that you can join on thanks a lot guys take care bye bye and thanks for watching it jai hind